Welcome to the seventh video in our quadcopter building for beginners series two. So we have gone a very long way from a set of components in the very first couple of videos now to a little quad that actually flies and is beautifully stable thanks to the nice equipment that's in here and also to things like Beta Flight 2. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to put the FPV gear on the top and I'll show you what I've done with that in a second but it's worthwhile us talking a little bit about FPV equipment and what you actually get in the box. If we move our model out the way for the moment and we open up the box that the frame came in you can see now we have very few little bits left. We've nearly used everything. Now, if I open the instructions, you can see that the top here is relatively straightforward to put together. There are two sides, a top plate and a couple of uh, spacers in there as well. And then you get the camera and the FPV transmitter. Now, the camera and FPV transmitter that you get with a kit is probably one of the weakest parts in my humble opinion. The power distribution board caused us a couple of little headaches with the cable routing, but this is a cracking little FPV transmitter, apart from the fact that it's 600 milliwatts. Now that for the majority of places is just way too big. We need a 25 for racing. A lot of race organizers these days won't let you race your quad unless you're running 25 milliwatts. And the other common is about 200, but a lot of places 25 milliwatts is your legal range. So by putting it on that, I immediately limit this quad in terms of what I can actually do with it. The other thing is the camera. This is a 700 TVL line camera. If we look at the specs for the kit, um, it is switchable between PAL and NTSC. It's got 700 TVL lines, but I haven't got a clue what the voltage is. So that could be exciting. So how would I connect these two pieces up and then connect them to the model? Because I've actually used something slightly different. So let me explain what I do with the stuff in the kit and I'll show you what I ended up doing instead. So a couple of slides. Here is our FPV video transmitter on the right. Here's the camera on the left. So the video transmitter on the right hand side has video ground and will accept seven to 24 volts. The camera just has voltage in, ground and video, and the power distribution board at the bottom. If you remember on the model, one side we had pads for 5 volts and the other side we had pads for 12 volts. We've used one of the 5 volt pads and ground already to power the flight controller, but I did say right at the beginning that that 12 volt would come in handy for the FPV gear. Now we could run the FPV video transmitter directly from a 3 or 4S battery because at the moment uh, that would be comfortably within the 7 to 24 volt range but I'm going to run it from the regulated power outage on the PDB just hopefully to avoid any interference. So what we're going to do then is if we were going to connect this up and I would connect it up this way to test it first of all. If you ever have any equipment and you're not sure about the voltage, go with the lowest version first. Uh, you don't tend to cook electronics if you go too low a voltage, but it definitely does that if you go the other way around. So here we have the video from the camera going directly into the FPV video transmitter. In things like cameras, it doesn't matter whether it's a 5 volt, a 12 volt power supply or whatever, the video signal is always the same size, format and amplitude. So you don't have to worry about that, you can just connect it. We obviously connect the camera video in and ground to the ground and 5 volts on the power distribution board to power the camera. And then on the other side, we connect the ground and 7 to 24 volts in into the 12 volts and ground on the power distribution board. And that should work fine if this camera is a 5 volt camera. I definitely set it up this way first just to test it to see if it worked and if it didn't then I'd go and connect it up like I've actually ended up connecting the kit we have here. So if it was a 12 volt camera I'd connect the voltage in and the voltage in from the FPV transmitter I'd connect those two wires together and have one wire going down onto the power distribution board 12 volts and similarly with all the black wires I connect the black wire from the camera to the black wire on the FPV video transmitter and connect that to the ground so that's relatively easy and straightforward and that's actually what I've ended up doing here.
Now, sometimes you actually have some cute kit. Fat Shark, for example, is quite nice. Some video transmitters actually have the five volts out that you need from the camera, so it's a single cable. We use this kit a lot here. Um, so, for example, in this one, you just plug your ground and video in onto the 12 volts and ground on the power distribution board. And then on the other side, you have one cable that has ground, five volts and video that you can connect directly up to the camera. Now, what we ended up using here is something slightly different. I'll show you in a second. We're actually going to use a HS1177 FPV camera, and we're using a slightly different video transmitter, pretty much the same size as the one that came in this kit, but an awful lot less power, which means I can actually fly it here in the UK without breaking lots and lots of laws. And if I want to, I can actually also fly it in things like FPV races too. And again, all I'm going to do here is exactly like we looked at before. The HS1177 FPV camera will accept 5 to 22 volts. So we can connect that red wire to the red wire going into the FPV video transmitter down to the power distribution board, connect all the black wires together and connect those to the ground, and then connect the video out from the camera, the HS1177 camera, into the FPV video transmitter. So that's the way that we've actually done it here. So if we go back to the bench, this is the pod ready to go. Um, the way I've done it is there is the HS117 camera. Uh, this is actually one I got from Hobby King. Um, this is a very, very common camera if you're flying FPV. And it comes in a slightly bigger format than some others. And we've looked at other cameras like this. Uh, things like the run cam, eagles, um, also things like the big fat shark cameras are the same as well. I can get it out of the packet. There we go. Um, that's actually what it looks like. So on the back here, we have video ground 5 to 22 volts. So that is here mounted in the middle. You'll notice there's a fourth wire as well. That's because with this one, what you can do is actually connect up this little um, five position joystick and you can change settings on these cameras. So rather than with some of the other cameras where you're a bit stuck with whatever you start with, that's um, the settings that you have to deal with. With these cameras, you can actually change the settings to be something that you like. So as this model has been going together so beautifully, I thought we're not going to skimp on a camera. We're going to put a nice camera on here. So that is my little HS1177, uh, which is in here at the front. I've had to drill two extra little holes. Um, that isn't a hole that's there by default. Um, I've drilled a hole in line with the two that were already there, and that has meant that the camera is pushed up a little bit, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this action camera on the top, let's just take that off actually, because that's kind of in the way at the moment. Uh, we'll be reviewing that in a later video. So the other thing that we've got in here is the FPV transmitter. So there it is. So it's a very similar size to the one that came with the kit. And I've managed to mount it across the piece so that the FPV aerial actually comes out the side. And by using a little needle file, I've actually opened this circular hole that's at the side, put a couple of corners in so it fits. And that actually fits beautifully. The other benefit of this slightly different transmitter, I'll put a link in the description if you want to order this one, do the same thing we're doing here. Um, it's not as nice as this in that the selection of the band and the frequency isn't on a push button. But the other benefit is it doesn't have the connector here on this side, so it would actually fit in. So what I've done is I've connected the cables up exactly as we just looked in that slide. So at the moment, I've only got these two wires coming off, which are going to connect down to the power distribution board to the plus five volts and the ground. Now with things like this, I'd always recommend testing them before you actually put them together. Um, I use a little rig like this. I actually put it on a little 3S battery, clip these leads onto it to power it up. I'd recommend that you always do that before you put everything together, because once this little guy goes together, because it's such like a switch watch, um, it's going to be really painful if we do that and it turns out it doesn't actually work. Now, the other thing I've done is the reason I've lifted the camera is because I want this space underneath. 
that space along with this little 3D printed piece. Uh, this piece is actually available on Thingiverse if you want to get one as well. And all that goes in these holes are these little 3mm uh, coffee stirrers, which are perfect. Is The way it's going to happen is I'm going to install the top on it like that. And hopefully you can see everything fits. And there's even room for the X4R receiver underneath everything. Not a massive amount, but just enough to make it comfortable. And then I can route these two antenna up through the straws. So that's the final piece that I'm going to do. Hopefully that helps those of you that are interested. I'll actually put a link to this um, HS117 camera that we're using from Hobby King as well, if you want to copy exactly what we're doing. But now we've done that, um, I think we're almost ready to put it together for the final piece and we have finished. A couple of last things then before we finish the video. Here it is all installed. Let me give you a couple of quick tips about how I got this thing back together because like I said, because it's a Swiss watch, it was very, very exciting. Now the way it works is that the top deck connects to uh, these pillars with these kind of four screws. Hopefully that you're kind of picking that up on the camera. There's two at the back and two at the front and uh, because everything is so busy up here because I wanted everything internal in this uh, vertical mount I had to file a little bit out of this 3D printed piece so that's um, helped with that. Uh, you can actually see the 12 volt and ground wires just about in there. Uh, that is what is powering all of the FPV equipment. I put a little 90 degree on here as well for the antenna. To put this together was a little bit tricky. What I ended up doing was actually connecting these risers, these black pieces here, uh, to the bottom plate and then attaching the bottom plate to the actual FPV pod. Now the thing that I didn't realise when I was building this, which kind of, and this is kind of why this uh, isn't recommended for a first time builder, is the way it's supposed to work is the top is held on and get the kind of light to shine on the carbon fibre. It's always fun trying to film something that's nice and black. There we go. So there's supposed to be a nut in there and a bolt that goes through this bottom plate to hold it in place. Now the challenge that I've got is because it's so limited on room, I didn't want to have a bolt actually pressing up against some of the connectors. So what I did instead is I've actually put a cable tie through one of these holes through this bottom plate and that is what's keeping it all together uh, so it's still lovely and secure but that shall hopefully keep it in one piece so thank you very much everybody for continuing to support us and watch us through the entire series now hopefully you if you followed along you have a cute little model like this as well. This is a really unusual model compared with all the other ones that we've set up. And personally, I'm a massive fan of it. I think Betaflight is working particularly well. With 3S, it hovers just below 50% throttle. On 4S, it's an absolute screamer. So thank you again for taking the time with us and building this along with us. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below the relevant video. And very happy flying. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.